one. Hello, Star Wars players. Welcome to another episode of Star Wars CCG Holo Theater. I am your host, Queso Sauce, Jerry Hine, whatever you want to call me. Uh, welcome. I'm welcoming myself back. It's been a few weeks since I've been on here, so thanks for having me. Uh, to uh, my co-host today is Mr. Robbie Hendon from Texas. Thanks for joining us. How you doing today, Rob? Hanging in there. Uh, thanks for having me. Happy to be back on, as always. So. Yeah, thanks for popping on tonight. We appreciate it. Congrats to your, your hockey team going to the Stanley yep. Cup. Woo, yeah, woo. stoked about that. Heck yeah. Oh, we got, uh, speaking of, of our special guest, uh, we got Brian Fred and Brian Fred's cat. What's your what's your cat's name, Brian Fred? This is Asher. Hi, That's Asher. Really you know, I just my lap there, so. Okay. So, okay. honestly, you could just get out of the screen. We just want to <laughs> hang out with the yeah, cat. Yeah, we'll, we'll hang out with the cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, B. Fred, uh, thanks for joining us on your very first appearance on Holo Theater. Uh, how does it feel? It feels good. Uh, Dan's been trying to get me on for a while, and uh, the last time that I had a Wednesday off, he basically asked me the next day, the next week and then i worked like 85 wednesdays in a row so <laughs> well hey thanks for making time with us and and it just happens to be that dan's not here so you know that's kind of a uh, fun i know that, i thought that was yeah dan, I that was dan had a uh, uh he had a family hangout this weekend and he stayed a little bit longer so he was kind of tired from the arizona temperatures and everything so i don't blame we figured him we'd that. give him a break yeah, nah. but, you know, it's and... it's good to have, you know, a, a bunch of different folks help, helping out since I've kind of taken a step back with my stuff. Uh, I know a lot right. of guys like Justin and yourself and Taco Bill and CRG, a lot, a lot of guys have uh, picked up the slack. So I want to definitely say thank you to, to you you and everyone else who has been helping with that because it was definitely kind of me and Dan for a while there. But I'm glad that we've uh, we sort of switched it up and we got you know a revolving door of uh, of hosts and co-hosts and I think uh, I think it's going to be good for <clears throat> good for making it go longer and, and keeping it fresh for all you guys so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah with with that uh, B Fred we're gonna we're gonna focus on you since you're the you're the special guest um, yeah. I mean, the guest of honor the, yeah the guest of honor congrats on making the I thought, uh, thought Asher was. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, Asher, too. I, I saw her tail going. Is it a boy or a girl? Sorry, that's kind of a name I'm not... Boy. It's a boy cat. Okay. Boy. So, it's a it's a boy cat. So, I, I saw his tail kind of swooping around your face. That was fun. But, uh, anyways, congrats on making the OCS uh, Top 16. I know that was uh, recently uh, announced or, or whatever. I guess the draft is coming up soon. So, yeah, what... Uh, you, you were the August qualifier, is that correct? No. No, no I didn't see you. Oh, you didn't play it? Yeah, so you, you were before that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, third month? Third or fourth? So February... So maybe April? April or May, something like that? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so what... Do you remember the month you qualified, what you were playing, any of the any of the games from that particular month? I know it's been a while at this point, but uh, do you happen to remember what got you there? Um... I think then I was playing a lot of uh, Games of the Black Sun and Throne Room. And okay. I remember that I lost my last game. That's all I really, that's the only memorable thing. But I was still, my strength of schedule was really high because I played Justin twice. Okay. I think I played Bastion and a few other people. Nice. I mean, so that's, that's definitely good to keep the strength of schedule up uh, going against those guys. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, I guess this, if you were running, talking about three months after the OCS, we're talking more like the MPC time. And I definitely remember a lot of AOBS and Throne Room around that time. So I guess that probably Actually, makes sense. Whatever, whatever month was the MPC is the month I qualified. Okay. You qualified right before it because it was April. I think okay. MPC was but, May. Was it right before it? Yeah, yeah you qualified right before it because I remember we were talking about it leading up to the MPC. Um because I thought that I went on a good like winning streak after I lost in the NPC, but I can I mean the months run together. So yeah, the same I mean, up until August, you were number two in the standings overall, so that would make sense that you went on a pretty good tear right around that time. Yeah, and those so. those decks are pretty good, you know, in the NPC if I remember correctly from doing a lot of the streaming around then and. And you, you, you're one of the best players that I've seen with AOBS, especially, you know, when I, I've seen you play that deck a lot. And, and I, I definitely admire the way you, 
you have your matchups like really Brian, Brian Mishki Brian Mishki would definitely not agree since I never used the backside of my objective since I'm not used to being on the backside of the objective. Well, Brian this Mishki. Cost, this cost me dearly. What has Brian Mishki done for me lately? I mean, you know, really. I don't know, lately. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you didn't even sign up for Texas Mini Worlds. I don't. Whatever. That guy doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> um, Living the good life. All right. So yeah, like we have the the top sixteen for the OCS. I think you ranked somewhere in the ninth, like right right in the middle uh, of there after uh, all of the standings were said and done. So the draft's coming up. Um, do you? You know, I know you haven't been playing much lately, like since August in the OCS, you didn't play at all. Is that correct? Yeah, the last game I played was the Texas Mini Rolls game that I lost. So yeah, you're a little bit like like me. I haven't been playing a, a ton lately. I'm sort of waiting for set 13 to come out and, and change things up a little bit, and hopefully, hopefully it will... Very, mu uh, very much that. Yeah, so... Um, with all that coming up, let's say let's pretend that you were you were the number one uh, overall. Do you have someone you would pick in the draft? I mean, I know we like to call people out or whatever, but you know, what if you were the number one? Which which person do you think that you would uh, lean towards drafting as your number one? Do you, do you have the standings in front of you? I have them here if you need. I them. don't, but I already I already knew who I I would have picked the entire time. Okay. Honestly. All right, and and who's that? So I would have picked Paul Myers. Um, he was the number one. If I... A, I don't know what it is about Paul Myers, but I mean, maybe, I mean, he's been okay the few times I've talked to him recently, but he can kind of rub me the wrong way. He's kind of annoying in the lobby. He used to slow play me in games and just like, he tried to time me out at Worlds one year and I literally had a four strand for like 25 force in the last two turns of the game to win the game. All right. And it's just... So there's a, there's that, a little, a little, a little good, heat right? there. I like that. I like you know, trying to maybe settle settle some scores and say, hey, let's uh, let's do it in the OCS and uh, see. There, so. There's another thing too. He, he's always in the lobby saying that I'll, I'm dodging him, trying to play him on Gimp and everything, and always asking me for games and all this stuff. And he even was in the lobby one night, like saying stuff. I was just like, you know what? If you want to play me that bad, you got the number one pick. Pick me for OCS, you know. Well, and this this would only add some fuel to that fire. So uh, I I'm digging it. I like it. Thanks for, you know, bringing some <laughs> bringing some heat. And for and for him too, he gets the advantage that I haven't played since uh, Texas Mini Worlds, and I don't really have decks or know what I would want to play. So Paul Myers, if you're watching or listening, there you go. Nice. You grab me up for six. So, so let's say, let's say it happens, and because Paul's picking first, if if memory serves. Yes, Paul um, is picking first. And and he and he. I would uh, to be to pick. What well, part of the reason I didn't play in August was because once his games were done, I would have had to win all of my games to get the first pick, and it just I was just like. So you're just, yeah, you kind of uh, just, just realized realized that it was going to be too hard to get there. And you know that that that's fair. Mm -hmm. I, I I understand that. Um, so let's say you know you get your wish and Paul picks you, um, and uh, yeah. So is would that inspire you to maybe you know get back on Gimp and, and start getting some uh, alt accounts going and getting your your juices flowing again? Huh. I mean, it might. I know that I have a couple other teammates that are also in the top sixteen, and they're far more along the process of knowing what they're playing probably and playing them well. So I'd probably turn to them and try and get some games in with them. All right, good call. But, I mean, it's, I haven't had a lot of time lately either, so I wanted That's to make right. a Palace Raiders deck for Robbie, but, you know, every time I think about getting on Gimp and making the Palace Raiders deck, I'm just like, man, I was like, I hate trying to make decks from scratch. <laughs> hey, but at least you don't have to cut out V cards for it. You don't got to do arts and crafts. You and just got to play. Uh, with Palace, but, the Palace Raiders, you never really had to cut out these slips anyway, because this is like all Palace Raiders and Patrol Crafts, you know. There's like six virtual cards or something in the deck. There's the yeah. uh, Palace Raider V, right? It was just one of your cards, right? Yeah, one of my... That, that was a mistake before they made cards. It just like made it obsolete. Yeah. It was good in theory. You can still yeah, run the then, other one, so... Well, at the time when he made it, like, we had... Like Raiders was actually relevant, I think, still, and 
It would except get, against Watto. Right, except against Watto, and you made it to kind of stop that, but then, you know, Raiders is just dead because Watch Your Step is kind of dead right now. Yeah, and... This uh, guy there, too. I know, I know Watch Your Step is a big uh, target for, for set 13, so... Um, for those who like Watch Your Step, and uh, I know B. Fred and myself and Robbie are among them, uh, keep your eyes out. It might for... be my favorite line of objectives. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, I think I think I play Throne Room more, but that's not an objective, so Watch Your Step is probably my favorite objective as well, <laughs> at least for Light Side. <clears throat> I mean, I, nobody can guess what mine is, so we'll just skip past yours is, that. Yours is Senate. <laughs> so... We already we already knew that. Tell me something. I would have never. Know. I would have honestly never known unless Robbie always told me. And I was just like, "Do people even know you like Senate?" Yeah. He's just like, "Yes, I'll ever play." Yeah. So he sends me a really nice, sweet Senate list right before the NPC, and he's like, "Hey, look at what we came up with." And I was like, "Really?" I, I had a different deck, but now I have to play Senate because B. Fred sent me this really awesome Senate list. I was yeah, looking at that list, list, and I was a little confused. That was a weird list. It's very similar. Yeah, yeah. Was that the Jedi business I, I, one? No. No, okay. No, no, no. This was the uh, Space one. Squadron yeah, yeah. Assignments, right. Okay, that's right. Yeah, it was but it's not the first time I've played Squadron Assignments in it either. Like, Chris right. Kelly can... He saw me build one before, and the problem it has is it doesn't pull, like, a battleground to hold. And then B Fred sent me that one with R2 to kind of turn anything into a battleground. I was like, oh, yeah, this R2, is great. I know Let's R2 play is, this. R2 is definitely a, uh, a hot topic in the meta right now. Same thing with Tantive. Those turning turning non battlegrounds into battlegrounds is definitely a. Uh, a yeah. It would thing be nice about... if Dark had something along the same lines. Or they do, presence. Get... Yeah, but that's so much easier to crappier yeah. yeah so you know it, it either needs to get off of characters or like you said it needs to even out for dark side so we'll, we'll definitely see what uh what the old D has in store for that so you mentioned uh you have a couple other teammates in the top 16 so what is it's the b fred crazy corral team what is the name of it again the team name is new allies Oh, it's and, the new allies. Okay, I thought it. I thought it had a sillier name. Maybe that's what Robbie sent me to to make me look silly on Holo Theater. <laughs> I've been trying to get them to rename themselves to B Fred's ninety nine Red Luff Balloon. That's what right. it was. I, I couldn't remember all of that, but I knew it had. He sent me something silly. So, so is is it like every like who's on your team in the top sixteen besides you? Drew Lichten, uh, Drew Lichtenstein and Greg Shaw. Okay, so. And they are, let's see, let me look at my standings here. Um, Shaw is 12th. Shaw is 12th. And, and Drew, Drew is 5th. Is fifth. Okay. So, Drew and Shaw on your team. And you said they're maybe a little ahead of the game in the playtesting department. Um, so what... They play uh, quite often. Right, yeah, definitely. I know those guys are on all the time. So what, um, what do you guys think are sort of the... The, the the decks you got to deal with right now. I mean, no idea. ISB. What are the ones you guys are, are most concerned with, or what? Right now. I'd say, I'd say it's probably really only those two. Though I mean, there's other. I mean, Throne Room. Of course, you always have to worry about. I mean, it's just like a lot of decks have taken back seats because ISB and no idea are way overpowered. So there's not much really besides those two. You know? Yeah, I definitely like that. Seems to... it, it, as bad as it sounds to say that, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've heard CCT has been. Like I said, I haven't been playing a bunch lately, so if for, forgive me if I'm a little out of touch. I know CCT has been sort of a big a big deal lately. Wado, I know, has been you know a little bit here and there. Um, but yeah, mains seem to be a little less played, especially for for dark side. But you know, throne room even seems to be less of the big swinging deck that it. Uh, always has been at least for the last few years so i was sort of wondering if you guys had anything plus you're not going to admit it on camera so um, <laughs> you know just try to wouldn't know right now anyways so i haven't really followed our conversations as much fair just enough. because i've had so much going on fair enough all right so let's say let's say that paul doesn't pick you or let's say you have the number two pick and somebody else picked Paul ahead of you. Who would you take then? 
Ooh, the there you 50. go. Good question, Robbie. If I couldn't pick Paul. Because uh, it, it's not like... Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Tom Damon, if Paul Myerson had already picked him, just because he hasn't played in like three months and... Maybe, maybe him. As far as I know, he hasn't played in three months. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those years where, you know, a lot of the people who've been playing or who have qualified have been playing well as of late, too. Minus, like, Tom, because he hasn't played in a few months. And um, I think, you know, out of Eric the Hunter top... Hasn't played in a few months. Yeah, and Eric Hunter hasn't played in a while. But, you know, out of here, one, two, three, four... Four, five, five people. I think six people qualified out of the top sixteen for Texas Mini Worlds top sixteen. So, okay, you know, everybody's been playing pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's not an easy decision. So, you know, always curious to see who people would pick and why and things like that. Not that V Fred's probably going to be picking at ninth now. Um, and hopefully, he, he, if he gets his wish, he just gets picked right away. Right. So, solve his problem. So, um, go ahead. I was going to say, so we know the order. We know Paul is one. Let's say Paul doesn't pick you. Who would you like in the upper half to pick you then? Do you have the upper half ahead on hand? I think I sent it to you. I think, I think hold on, let me, let me just scroll up. I think, our some, yeah, I think you got yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. It's way up there. Oh, there, it, there it is. Uh, maybe Connor. I mean, I'm not saying Connor's not a really good player. Oh, he yeah. plays a lot. We're not calling anybody. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've seen him. I've, yeah, I'm not trying. Yeah, exactly. I'm not trying to call anybody out. Connor's a good dude. He plays a lot. He plays uh, well most of the time. In our past games, he's made some mistakes. So. I don't know if he gets like when he gets in high profile games, maybe he uh, makes plays he normally would because he feels pressure. And again, I'm not trying to call him out or anything, but I mean, yeah. everybody is a lot. It's just, it's all good players that are in the top eight there. So right, right. it's hard to say, like well, would I want to play any of them, you know, uh, an echo base trooper. Uh, he's probably, I, I think I was 50, 50 against him in OCS games. And one of the games I beat him, have won that game so I mean he's probably one that I wouldn't want to play maybe he'll pick me now I don't know but I mean <laughs> I know what decks he usually plays so if he plays other decks than what he's most comfortable with then he's probably going to be less scary to me but if he plays WAP or uh, Agents of the Black Sun he runs the risk of me playing decks specifically to beat those decks right because yeah he definitely he plays a ton of WAP so I, I admire. I definitely him. don't like playing against WAP. I admire him 100% for playing don't as like much playing WAP as he does. WAP, WAP is has always been a, a favorite deck of mine, so uh, I, I'm glad that he's bringing it back because I thought it wasn't very good. But he's obviously making making a fool out of me. So but WAP is one of those decks that every time they make helpers for other decks, you can play in WAP. Obviously, you know if it's like a Luke, it there's a lot help, of restrictions. It's just who you can WAP play. WAP keeps but... getting help basically. Like right. Sator help the new Sator helps WAP a lot, you know. Yeah, and you can you can put R two in there, and uh, so there's there's definitely some some tricks that you can do with WAP nowadays. Being able to play resistance guys still like solo, solo and Chewy because they're still aliens, right. so you can play them. Uh, you can't play like Ray or uh, you know General Leia or anything like that, but you can definitely play a couple of those dudes for sure. And, Definitely helps helps out WAP, so I'm I'm glad to see that someone's out there having having some success with uh, good old we have a plan. Right. <clears throat> so the uh, the next thing that we sort of have going on is like the Texas Mini Worlds is what top four now. Yep. It's, top uh, four. Shaw top and four. Olsen, for, and then Shaw versus Olsen, and then uh, MHT versus Kessling. So yep. how do you think those games will go down, Mister B Fred? I guess Greg Shaw's on one of your teammates, so you might have a little more. Well, Shaw and Kessling are both his teammates. Oh, they are. Okay, both, I wasn't aware of Kessling. Yeah. So you think what about like what you think both your teammates are going to end up in the final? Because that could happen. I think they very much could. 
you know, I'd say if I had to pick a favorite that I thought of the top four, it would definitely be Shaw. So, and I think the Kessling is very capable of beating MHT. You know, they're, they, they're, he's been playing a lot too, actually. So, and yeah, he's think, really good with the decks he's been using. I had Kessling in the top four in my like bracket prediction. It was like the only thing I got right out of my <laughs> brackets, but I think I had <laughs> that. So I was, yeah, I, I, I always had good respect for, for Mike. He's got, he's definitely got a good, uh, a good uh, mind for this game when he's not too hammered. So, yes, when he's not playing hard mode. Well, and when he actually prepares. Right. Like that's the other thing. Mike. He can, he can get away with he's it too. Usually drunk. <laughs> There's been some Texas mini worlds in the past where he didn't prepare. But that's fair. When he when he does prepare, like I mean, he I know he spent some time preparing and listening to the team and everything on this. So. You know, it shows that it does pay off, and you know, I hope you know he does well. I mean, I would like to see him because I've known Mike for years. You know, actually beat Greg Shaw in the finals. Yeah, like that. That's a pretty awesome top four. You know, at, at Matt Harrison Trainer is a good dude. He's living in like yeah. New Zealand or something now. Um, he's right. a wild card, really, too. Yeah, he's yeah. Been playing a lot of different stuff and had not been playing as much, so people couldn't like see Dexy likes as much. Right. I would also like to say that. I did rank him as the number one seed, even though he was such a wild card going into this. And look where he is, you know. That's fair. And he didn't have he didn't have an easy path to the top four either. I mean, he had to go through Bastion and Justin Desai, two former multiple world champions, to get there. So yeah, you know, Matt is definitely on top of his game, and I'm glad I ranked him as a one seed. Yeah. Also, three of my. I've only beat Matt twice, and it was literally his first NPC that he ever came to. So after that, I think I'm like zero and three against him. Yeah, he's, yeah. So he's, he, a, he's definitely can play. He's a good. Dynamo. I remember. I remember a few years back, him and Tom Kelly, you know, were always teammates, and there was I think it was an NPC where he got upset, and that was like the first event in eight events he didn't make day two of. Um, so, I mean, he's consistently been on top when he has played. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I can see literally any of these four guys taking down the championship this week. I mean, I think Shaw's put in a ton of work lately, too. And, I mean, Greg Shaw is a two-time world finalist, um, losing to Chu and, I think, uh, was it Bastion that he lost to as well? No, it was Angelo. He lost to Chu and Angelo. Yeah, I think you're right there. Angela. Yeah, so, you know, Shaw's always dangerous. Uh, Joe's played a lot. Joe's dangerous. You know, you see him. Joe's really good at match play. Yeah. So, and that's what I think the Shaw Olsen match, like, both of those guys are good and, you know, really veterans of match play versus, you know, MHT and Kessler, who good. don't have that kind of same experience but are both good players in their own. Yep. Yeah, that's a pretty awesome top four. I don't think you could have, you know, picked one that was more awesome than that because uh, those guys are going to put up some good games. I'm excited to see those. I'm trying to get back into playing and watching some more Star Wars cards. And uh, like I said, hopefully leading up to set 13, things will, uh, the meta will shift around a little bit. We'll, uh, we won't have so much ISB and no idea. We'll have, uh, we'll have so much spies. Yeah, yeah. We'll have some less, less spies to deal with. We'll have much more. You know, be much more uh, open with our information. We don't have all these spies there, there, lurking there's, around. It's not just that there's so much spies. It's just that they're too efficient, too. Yeah, 100%. Right. Like, yeah, they're like, just stacking no sites with all those ISP well, it's, agents. And... It's high forfeit, you know, and they break ways of um, getting them off the table outside of battling, you know, or outside of attrition. And well, yeah, then they cancel your, your Battle Destinies or your Attrition Draws and reduce them. It, 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 those decks are just, they're too negative play experience for me right now. So I'm definitely hoping that... Uh, they, they, they literally do too much. Right. They do too much and have really no, like, downsides to them. Right. I mean, there's no downside to Doom stacking right now, and both of those can do it very well. So... <laughs> Makes you miss the J. Quill stuff of the old days. Oh man, J. Quill would be so awesome right now. And what was the light side version? It was <laughs> Tannis. Tannis, Tannis, yeah. Tannis, yeah. Yeah, so for those who never played. Remember, uh. They... Go ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. 
Oh, I like the Reed Dickhat deck that just had Tannis Bajic as the rep and didn't flip. It was just mains. Yeah, yeah. So for those who didn't play back in Legacy, the ja- Jaquil and Tannis, basically when they deployed, for each character at that su- at the site that the other person had, they had to lose that much force, right? Yeah. Yeah, so if you had a doom stack of like seven or eight characters and you put Jaquil down, they had to lose seven force. Uh, and so that was, I mean, it was a pretty swingy counter to that kind of stuff, but, um, you know, it definitely made you think twice about stacking uh, a site pretty heavily. All that. And they were also spies, and Janus, like, tur- or Jaquil, sorry, uh, turned off the Hoth energy shield for a turn when he was deployed. I, I think, think that so. was he could also part of his... under the shield. He could deploy oh, yeah, under yeah. the shield, right. So that way you could you could deploy there and mess up EBO and silly stuff like that. So they were definitely interesting... Uh, different uh, counters from back in the Legacy era. But yeah. Um, so yeah, we're about halfway through here on Holo Theater. I think it's about time to start doing some of the uh, the usual segments here. Um, do we usually start with uh, Swing and a Miss, or do we go to uh, the Lore Wars first? What do you say, Robbie? Usually Swing and the Miss. We do Lore Wars last. Okay. Lore we're probably Wars. really bad at Lore Wars, by the way. But Lore Wars you is... Gotta get... It's fun. I like Lore Wars. <clears throat> so, Dan picked the card uh, for Lore Wars this week. So Yeah, I did not get to pick the card. I had an idea for a card just to call B Fred out, and we didn't get to run with it. So it's would, it just be like, would it just be Palace Raider? I know. He, has a game pick. he doesn't have lore, does he? Yeah, I think he does. <laughs> yeah, there's some lores that are really but he, but obvious. You know, it's three I mean, there's, it it's garbage lore, but it's still lore. There's yeah, there's some oh, no. lores that are that are just like when it's like a ship or something. It's just like the the description of what the ship's engines and armor and stuff are. Like those aren't any fun. We we pick we pick fun lore cards, so it it'll be a good one. So I I think I accidentally did a swing in the miss question when we were talking to you just now. So we'll just go ahead and and make it super official. So the first one is uh, Texas Mini Worlds will have a all new allies final, which is your team. Is that it's a hit or swing and a miss? I pick it's a hit. Yeah. Gonna go go on my gut. It's gonna okay. be a Kessling Shaw final. Kessling Shaw final. What about you, Rob? Uh, I I, I want it to be Kessling and Shaw because I they're some of my friends in the game, but it's hard to put it. It's hard to bet against Matt right now. MHT is just too strong. I think he'll end up taking down Kessling in two close games, and Shaw will beat Joe, and then I have no idea. All right. All right. I'm also going to say swing and a miss. I think the other way around on your thing, Robbie, I think Joe will beat Greg, but Kessling will beat uh, MHT. That's my crazy prediction. And it's well, then we got three different predictions. One of us will be right. Yeah, it's almost like one of us has to be right. Well, no, I guess there's the fourth option of Joe versus MHT that we didn't pick. That's fair. So. We got three of the. That's what Dan picks. That's what Dan picks. That's that's yeah. That's Dan's pick. Yeah, with yeah, none, none of them. Pick. All right, you want to do the next one, Rob? Uh, I lost where the questions were. All right, so. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. I got it. I've got a box thing right here, too, so I can do a lore for you guys also. Uh-oh. All right, that'd, that'd be fun. Uh, I'm down with that. Um, so the next one... That, oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, set 13 will change the uh, the world's top eight meta. Is that it's a hit or swing and a miss? We always start with you, B-Fred. Oh, I was just thinking. I'm, That's uh, fair. There's, is there any erratas coming? Do we know? I just from what you know right now. Uh, I'm gonna that... I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with swing and a miss. I don't think that D13 is going to change the meta. Okay. I think it's gonna be ISB and no idea for days. <laughs> All right. I hope you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong too. <laughs> Except for the side wouldn't make any of my invasion helpers. Every time he asked me about cards when if he, I first found out that he was probably working on the scent, and I told him about invasion helpers, and then about two weeks later he asked me about more cards. I was like, "So how are those invasion helpers coming?" And he dodged the question. So <laughs> I'm, I'm st- good, for, good, Justin. Good, Justin. I'm I'm still on play testing, and I've seen most of the cards. I haven't looked at them lately, but there might be a few cards you could stick into invasion. Uh, 
I mean, do you want it to be strictly invasion, or can it be like a different version of like a destroyer droids deck? I don't like destroyer droids. <laughs> That's why I don't want invasion. That's all I got to say about that. I wasn't. I wasn't sure. How I, you if anybody that. wants to, if anybody wants any, I own like forty. So uh, if, you, if it droids? becomes good, all right. Uh, so what do you think, Rob? You think it's a hit, swing and a miss? Uh, so you know, I have seen only the preview cards that have been spoiled. I have no further knowledge other than a possible errata coming. Um, but it hasn't been official yet, so I don't want to release it. Um, I would hope that it changes it, but I have no idea. I know they've talked a lot about smugglers, and if they make Watcher Step any, they give Watcher Step any kind of help, it might be able to overtake it. Um, but uh, B Fred would know the Watcher Step ISB matchup from past days. ISB is probably still going to be really bad for Watcher Step. That's kind of what I was thinking. And if it's if that's the case, then it probably will be a swing and a miss. It also depends how quickly the set comes out. If it comes out a couple of weeks before Worlds, that may not be enough for people to make some changes. I really hope that doesn't happen. We need at least like a month. I agree. I, I hope they get it out the first weekend of November, to be honest. Yeah, I know. You know, with with changing up the world, nice. the world's timing. Um, you know, they've been taking more time to to fiddle with it and stuff and make sure it's you know as good as possible. So, um, you know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna be contrarian and say it's a hit because I mean I do have a little more knowledge about right. things than you guys do. Um, so I, I know more of what's going on and what what could be in there. Obviously, just for, if you on playtesting, there's a lot of cards in there, but. Not all of them are going to get released, you know. Um, so uh, with, with what they end up going with, I still don't know. So um, th there's definitely some some cool stuff, and we've seen a few of the preview cards uh, already. Um, there's some good ones. Uh, the rock card, I'm a little confused on, but um, maybe someone out there will break it. Um, yeah, maybe. When... I actually think lay a ship with Holdo may make it something in OA. To be honest. Like, no, yeah, that, that one. Is... That one seems good. That one seems good like, to me. Or just like using, oh, it, it using that thing to, again. Using that to pull Ray like seems really strong. Right. I don't know. Like, well, I mean, they can already pull Ray with Ray's hut, but you know, right. they could pull General for, for other decks, or, Yeah. Right. Like that could be really strong for OA. So yeah, OA we may see that. could see a boost. That would be nice because that's a. I still think, like Brian Fred said, like I think ISB is probably bad for OA too, just like it is for Watch Your Step, where ISB can just doom stack your sights and you're just kind of. Oh, we're stuck. Especially if it's the ISB that's been going around that just has like 30 some characters in it. It's just like, what is old allies going to do? Yeah, right. and like, I don't like that the uh, counter for light side to the ISB is like, oh, well, we'll just play like broken cards like Tarn Mison and just like make all your forfeit on your starship equal to zero because you you know, shoot a weapon right. or whatever, like, that, I've always hated that card, that left side card in particular, um, so it's like, well, that's not, like, I, bringing back broken cards to deal with broken decks is, it's just a struggle, right. you know, it's a tug of war of bad stuff, so I hope we, we definitely get some, uh, some solutions to the ISB, uh, Doom stacks and, and no idea as well, I think light side is a little more balanced, but no idea is still insane, so... Um, Light, Light side can still at least run surprise assault, whereas no idea is immune to the dark side counterpart. Yeah, because those like are just crushing against scrub decks. That's right. that's a good point. That's something I hadn't really thought about. That's uh, surprise assault is uh, definitely. It, interesting I probably shouldn't even counter. said anything, but it's something I definitely discussed with the team before. It's like, why don't you just like play this if you're going to lose the ISB? They have like five guys there with eight power, and just like. Right. Yeah, I mean, especially like with a main deck where you know you have higher destinies, or you can Jedi Lev into you know all your Weeses and stuff like that. Right. All those guys are power one or Repeal. two. Yeah, you know you right. can you can make sure that your deck is full of some good numbers. That's there you go. You heard it here first. Maybe Bright B Fred shouldn't have done it, but use uh, use surprise assault against those ISB Doom stacks. See what you have some success there. There is a counter uh, a defensive shield against surprise Cold assault. Feet. No? Cold, oh, it's cold. No, feet. no, no, no D shield, but it's uh, it's uh, cold feet. Okay. Um. Yeah. So yeah, you want to do the next one, Rob, or you want me to keep doing them? No, I found them, okay. <laughs> so I can do this one. Yeah. All right. So swing and a miss, B Fred. You're actually going to put in time and practice before worlds. 
Uh, I say it's a hit. Matt Scott will force me to play. Then again, he tried to force me to play before Texas Mini Worlds, and I hated the meta so much. It's just like, dude, I was like, we're just going to sit down and play a bunch of two and a half hour long games and learn nothing. So I was just like, I don't want to slog through a bunch of ISB and a no idea playtesting games. So maybe it's swing and a miss. Maybe I would just be like, you know, I just can't do it. I just can't play. In the last three or four months I played OCS, I literally was playing Hunt Down and Throne Remains just because I was trying to get, like, hour-long games. So that pretty much tells you how I feel about the meta. Big time. <laughs> yeah. I actually did pretty well with Hunt Down, though. I beat a couple no ideas with Hunt Down, strangely enough. So, I don't know. Yeah, if you can like, figure out matchups, which I I think you're good at, you know, you can definitely... and and. That one makes sense to me. You can do some things that they're not comfortable with, but they usually just have counters for everything is usually how it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I honestly think if Worlds was in person, B-Fred would, be, would play a little bit more. Like, Matt Scott would drag him out to play, but, you know, with COVID going on and all online, B-Fred's, a, B-Fred's an in-person kind of player. Like, he wants to sit there and talk and have a good old time, and it's hard to do that when you're typing in chat. You've actually changed me over the last couple of years, Rob. You always giving me shit for just sitting up in the room and playtesting and stuff. Oh yeah, like, I don't want you to I do didn't that. Play test for... Yeah, well, I didn't play test for Seattle at all. And then like the last day, I was just like, you know, I'm just gonna play my world's decks and change a few cards, which is pretty much what happened. And then I just I I go for the experience now more and like hanging out and like doing stuff. And I'll play games if Kessley makes me play games. Like Kessley wants to play test, so I play test with him. I don't. I'm just right. like, whatever, you know. Well, it's good, because so, you used to maybe, miss, like, an entire event, like, playtested Friday and Saturday night, and we would never see you, so. You definitely, you definitely made me start thinking about it. And then Germany was so amazing. Like, I don't think I playtested. I maybe played, like, two games before Worlds the entire. I, we had, like, you know, what, ten of us that we went on that road trip with, and everybody had decks and stuff, but I just didn't play any games. I just went and did all, like, the things, like, every night with whoever wanted to go out and do stuff, and it that felt sounds, great. That sounds more fun. I mean, it's just... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. I, it's got to the point, when I was younger, and it's sad to think about, I was so good when I was young, because I played all the time. And now, as I'm older, it's just like you, there's nobody that plays in Indianapolis for once, and, you know, you, you have more adult things you have to do, so I can't play as much, so I just... I mean, I don't know... I just don't have it in me anymore to like be as competitive as I once was. I started to realize that, so I just wanted to have fun instead. Well, like we also have money. I'm surprised I got top two at Seattle. Like really surprised. I'm not, but we we also have money now, which we didn't always have before. You know, after playing in room, most of us were broke. So you know, now we have money to be able to go out and see the sights and hang out with everybody. I know. When we were talking about going to Worlds this year, you and I had talked about, you know, going up a few days early and, you know, going down to Tom Hayes' store and hanging out with him. And now we're, now we're just doing it next year. Right. Now we've posted it off to next year, and we'll go and hang out for a week. Like, my plan is to go up there a week before and hang out and see the sights and cruise around D.C. What else Me am too. I going to do? So We're going to have Nationals in Colorado in july yeah so. yeah i was really excited for that yeah, yeah. oh yeah in july in- yeah yeah as long as yeah. i mean I told Robbie, tentatively too. obviously it's still you know a little under a year away but um we're that's the plan so as long as in-person events are I mean, go. as long as if we don't have any events in january i told robbie i'm gonna like fly to texas and like get him and we're gonna road trip around texas and visit all like visit everybody in texas there you yeah, go. I invited Kate. I invited Jerry. Yeah, with yeah. Keep me informed of that because that sounds pretty fun. I'll see. If I, can... I invited Jerry because I have enough room for a couple people. So Just tag along for a little bit of that trip. Yeah. We'll see what what we can do. I tried to I tried to get a hold of Jan on his birthday and like see what he was up to, and he just never even replied to me. So yeah, I, don't know I, what's I, with that. I I called him as well. He didn't get through. He was he must have been busy. So uh, if, yeah, if you happen maybe, to be watching, do fun or something. Maybe. Uh, if you happen to be watching you Jan a smart or phone? Jan's dad, happy birthday, Mr. Westergaard. Uh, it was on uh, Monday or Tuesday? The 14th, 13th, oh. something like that. So Was that Jan or his dad's birthday? Jan. Mr. Westergaard. I know, Jan? well, okay. 
Jan's dad is a little more active. He plays on Gamp a decent amount. I know he's he's watched a little bit on Twitch, so maybe he, maybe he's watching right now. But <clears throat> yes, Taco Bill, tell yeah, Taco, tell Jan yeah. that we miss. Yeah, tell him happy birthday from Holo Theater and B Fred and Robbie and everybody. So yeah, tell him we definitely miss him and want him to come back and hang out with us. That's right. Yes. Come and hang right. out with me and now B Fred. It's, and... it's your guys' turn though. Everybody. Oh, for you. Swing and a miss is a hit. I'm going to play testing for Worlds. Yeah, I think, you two guys now, right? I think it's a hit. I think you're going to get drug in by your team. Kessling and Matt are going to, you know, push you, and you're not you're not going to want your young guns on your team to take over. You're going to want to show them where you where the old vet is and the old wily vet that has 30 hey, years Fred's of Star Wars not that experience. Old. He's been around since. I was just saying, are there any of us young guns anymore besides Mishki? Yeah. Uh, I mean, before it's been, you know, you went to, what was it, that one Seattle for the World Qualifier and won that in 99? 99. So, I think I've been playing since 97 in tournaments. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you the qualified, with the, uh, yeah, that is you've a qualified for day two of Worlds for quite a few in a row, if not since then, I think. Whether you've attended None, them, none probably in the last 10 years, but well, before yeah. that, oh, day, day two. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I, I was going to say, you haven't missed a day two, and those were the hard ones when you had to actually qualify Dude, back then. I didn't play in 2004 and five, okay. and in 2000 I qualified. And this is one, I, I don't really, people ask about, like, you know, regrets and stuff, and I say I don't regret hardly basically anything but in 2000 I qualified for worlds in the first regional that we had I think it was one of the first regionals of the year and I went to origins and they told us that we could play that year even if we qualified and when I got there they were just like no you can't play and I was just like that's weird literally just like sat around yeah I just sat around my buddy Kirk who always went with me to tournaments and stuff he decided he was just going to play EverQuest in the room (laughs) <laughs> and just drop me off, and yeah, and just drop me off at Origins each day, and so I literally just sat there and watched Gary Carmen and Clint play against each other because all the three of us were like the only people that were qualified for Worlds at that time. And since I couldn't play in events, I slowly lost interest that year, and ended up just not even going to Worlds that year. I wish I, That's I weird. wish I had. That, yeah, I mean, just because you're already qualified doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to still play that's that's really weird it's really strange back then back then you couldn't but that year i specifically remember and that's because clint showed up too and we right. all thought that we were going to be able to play and then they just told the three of us we couldn't play the cypher had some really weird tournament rules that they've they learned with lord of the rings and they took away a lot of them but the early days of star wars tournaments were Man, they were something special when they came to decipher. <laughs> yeah, I, I would ag- I would agree with that. Like, yeah. I remember coming from Magic and PTQs, and I started playing, I think, in 95, 96, and I saw some of their qualifiers, and I was like, yeah, this isn't the right game to play for that competitive feel, and so I just went back to Magic because it had more structure than what Decipher did. And... I came back right after oh, yeah. Decipher lost the license, and I think I came back right after Freedom Gone because I came back right before DPC Houston, and I played at that as my first event in you know six years or whatever. And wow, uh, and then within a year, I went five and one at states in Texas and missed out on the final confrontation by like twenty diff. And then I went. Um, what a disaster diff is. Yeah, I went. <laughs> I went five and one at Worlds Day One and the Open One. Missed out behind Goglin, Mike Jim, Matt Lush, Graham Neal, and Andy McClure. And I had beaten Lush in the top in the Swiss rounds, but I lost out on Diff. It was ridiculous. Went five and one. Yeah, Diff. Out. Diff is a harsh mistress. I, I like that. Really, the only time that we use Diff anymore is in match play, because at least it's not a whole. Agreed. It's not a whole eight yeah. to ten game tournament that you're dealing with where you have to worry about diff. Right. And it's just match, so match play is pretty much the best way you can do it too. Right. So. Right. And I, I, I thought for Texas Mini Worlds, like it was probably the best way to do like a you know a four game eight person pod event. I wish I had maybe taken it a little bit higher and done strength of schedule instead. Because man, some of those games I felt bad for B Fred grinded them. <laughs> he was 
he was grinding games, and I, I, I was sitting there going, man, I feel so bad for him. But I'm also on, like, it takes three the hours. Of this series was a complete disaster. We'll put it that way. Yeah. I, I, the only game I really won was against poor Casey, who had basically decided that, I don't remember who he said he talked with, maybe Chris Kelly, and he said that he made it, I, when we right when we were playing, he said, I made a whole new deck Friday, so I don't know how good this is going to do. I was like, what? I was like, why would you do that? He's like, well, Chris T- Kelly told me the deck that I was playing, and there's no way I could beat you. I was just like, for the off chance that we did happen to play that matchup, which funny enough, we did end up playing that matchup, he played the deck he had switched to, and I, had, I literally had no idea what was going on, and just like, that was only, every other game I had besides that was just a complete freaking train wreck game where I had almost no chance the entire time except Brian Searson, I don't know if you're watching or not, but yeah, I have no idea of what you were doing in that game. He just literally gave me a free win. Uh, I mean, maybe you just didn't want to play anymore and you wanted me to have to play the last game and, you know, maybe the joke was on me, but yeah, I had my last that three games entirely, was like... That was entirely Ryan's play right there. He was just, he was in that same that mode you were right? Yeah, like he was in this. I know he was because I felt so bad for both of you guys. Except then I realized I had been up, you know, running the event for forty something hours, and I, I didn't really you. push it anymore. So I was like, "Screw you guys! I'm more tired." But the, I, the, I the know. game against Ryan, it was like it was like the kick in the nest game where first game, I, mean, I talked to Matt because I figured they'd all make decks just to beat Diplo. They, they'd play the Dagobah Cave deck, they'd play like Endor Ops or TTO or something that could just like get Boba Fett and kill you first t- turn. Yeah. I was like, okay. I was like, we'll play. I was like, we'll just play No Idea first game. And then throw everybody off because I never played No Idea. I haven't played No Idea since Nationals last year in Minnesota because it just didn't feel right. So I played No Idea the first game, played Dan. And got literally every single thing he and, and CCT scum is relatively good against uh, right. No idea. He got everything he needed like right away and just crushed me. I didn't. I mean, I didn't know what, it didn't feel right the whole time. I was like, you know what? I'm, like, I'm just gonna switch to Diplo for the next game. And then it's just like Dagobah Cave CCAB. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yep. And he just like smashed me first turn, but didn't kill my three P. I was like, okay. I was like, I'm good. Play my stuff down. I'm just like, oh, I activated Chandrilla. I was like, that's awesome. So I sit there, play a bunch of dudes. He plays more dudes, destroys all my stuff again. And then by that time, the game's just over already. So I was just like, I was like, okay. I was like, this is really awesome. Yeah. I I knew, and like, it, watching a couple of your games off at Texas Mini Worlds, it reminded me of the uh, that top eight you did against Ryan Jellison at Indoor, the first Indoor, where he was playing... You sat down with Wada, and he sits down with TRM speeders, and you're like, what the hell? And, you know, you're just like, how the hell am I supposed to win this? And I was just like, shit. And then I don't remember what his other so, matchup was, but it was also bad for you. I won you. that game, though. I know you did. and I won the game against the speeder deck. Yeah, but like, that seems you sat impressive. There, he sat there and grinded it, and... Then you had to do it again, and I know you had to do it again when you flipped sides. Like, you had to grind because it was another bad matchup for you. It was but, ISB, and I was throne room, I think. Yeah. I and have you no sat, idea how I won that game either. So. Yeah, you sat there, and you're like, I have no idea how I won either of these games, but you grinded them out. But, like, you could tell at that time there was still a smile on your face, and you were laughing and having fun. And then I could tell during the – those the Texas Mini Worlds when you're grinding, you're just like, can we end this game now? How can we just end this game? I immediately after my last game was over, like, and the worst part is like halfway through that game against Edward, uh, is it Sheen? I don't know how you pronounce his last name. I think it's Chien Sheen, something we'll, we'll, like that. We'll go with that. Yeah. Well. <laughs> okay. So about how about I'd say when it was, already wasn't going great for me. Matt Scott texts me, and he's just like, he's like, Dan just won by, like, a million, so you have to win this game by 23. And I literally had, like, 23 cards left or something at that point, and he was had drains of, like, four a turn set up, and I was just like, like, well, I got one chance here. And then he just, like, he left Leia in the middle site when I had Thrawn. I was going to try and follow all his guys and, like, smash him. So he just left Leia and spread out to the other two sites. I was just like, you know what, I can't even do this anymore. I was like, you win. It's fair I enough. Got up, yeah. Left the house, went on a walk, 
came back, felt a little bit better. My head was throbbing. I was just like, <laughs> it wasn't a good experience. We'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah. You can't win them all. I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> Certified that fresh. That hurts you would recommend one of my events. Like you said, maybe just make the pods bigger still, next time and do SOS. Again. I would still play again, though. If you, if you told me the exact same setup and everything for next year, I would play again. Yeah, I know you would. Awesome. And I'd probably leave with the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have a, hopefully a new, different meta next year. Yes, we will. And, you know, maybe hopefully. we could. Is, is Texas something that you're interested in trying to do in person again, Rob? Probably not in person. Um, it's harder to get flights down here, and I'd rather let other areas kind of get their events. I may try to do another big online one, though, next year, because I know, um, you know, we do have some downtime and things when there's, you know, less in-person events, and having the online ones, I think, gives some people that aren't always able to travel, like MHD. I don't think he'd be able to really travel as much, Drew. Yeah, because they're overseas. Um, some of the European players, I hope that their online event for Euros will inspire more of them to play online and yeah. get a few more of those to show up for some of the bigger uh, online events. But, you know, like I think having a big online event every so often wouldn't be so such a bad thing. Yeah, um, it might be a good it keeps, thing. It keeps interest, I think, because I've since everything is like, you know, there's no real worlds or anything like that. I'd say my interest in the game is at an all-time low right now because it's just like, I mean, I know that the top 16 is coming up and all, but that's not coming up until like October or something, right? <laughs> yeah, the yeah. draft is yeah, like it's it was scheduled that way so that they wouldn't have to do Texas Mini Worlds and uh, the OCS at the same time. And this is another one of my faults with doing the, the Texas Mini Worlds is I made the the top 16 probably take a little bit longer than I probably should have, but I tried to give people some time to play. Like, it was a short notice event. I'm hoping that next year well, I can give a little bit more time. Because it was this was kind of like, hey, we need to kind of test some online stuff for Worlds slash do something to keep people's interest. Because like B-Fred said, interest, I think, across the board is almost at an, an all-time low right now. Especially for, because we're, for like the, the players. Meta, the the meta players, yeah, the players like to go out, in person. Know? And and right. like I like going to, to tournaments in person, even if I'm just there to do commentary, and we're just not able to do that. And and like even just like playing a Colorado local event, like is something that we haven't. I I mean we probably could at this point, but it's not something that everybody necessarily feels comfortable with, even if it's just six to ten to twelve people or something. So, you know, I I right. understand you know everything. It's it's a different different world. We were gonna run nationals you know and go to the Coors Field for a baseball game and all that good stuff but you know then 2020 happened and and everything yeah. just changed yeah so. I mean and it like even just 2020 itself has been you know a morale a morale dropper for everybody right like nobody's really having fun with this year so far yeah and gained 45 pounds <laughs> wow Bummer. oh my god that's, I know. that's actually surprising because you were on top of that for a while like you were you were hitting the gym all the time i don't know time. if i'm depressed i don't know if it was. i mean i still go to the gym it's just i eat a lot of shit at work i don't know if i'm depressed or what it's well it's also probably because you're working so much too that adds into it because you're like oh i'm just stuck here might as well eat some junk food real fast that well, happens i'm sure you'll get uh, everything straightened back out mr b fred um we all we all have faith in you trying yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we got, you've got the OCS top 16 to look forward to. You've got more grinding to come your way. Um, you've got worlds to look forward to. You've got, you know, our trip next year to look forward to. Um, yeah, we've got dark side sand crawlers to sell. Yeah. If you're interested. <laughs> Definitely need a yes. few more of those. <laughs> So. Maybe they'll break Jawas. Maybe B13 will break Jawas, and my dark side sand crawlers will go up to like 75 cents a piece instead <laughs> of a quarter a piece. In a perfect world, you know, that that's, that could be the thing. Go, go, go set that, 13. If, if something breaks Jawas, that means 
we're gonna see more Eric White and Broken Con everywhere. We need to break Anytime. light side Jawas, cause then my boy Justin from Colorado will have a good time. He loves playing light side Jawas, so he um, seems like a what, what is the what, what is the guy that sounds like Ratik? Is the isn't there another one from Light There's like a Rakik, Ra I think is one. He's like R C I C, like R apostrophe C I. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like Rakik or or. I'm surprised they haven't made. Ratik. I'm surprised they haven't made him do the same thing as Eric White V. <laughs> Just make a light side counterpart. Yeah, if uh, Jagtech, if you're if you're listening to this light side Jawa talk, help us out with the Jawa name. While while he's coming up with that, we're gonna we're gonna do lore wars because it's that time. Uh, My lore war with Dark Side Sandcrawler, by the way. So oh, like cheater! You 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 came out with it too early. All right, so I'm gonna read you the lore. I will give you that this is a light side card. Okay. Oh. I'll help you out with that, okay? So, the lore of this card is as follows. Details of the, the notorious Incident at Anoet are required reading for Imperial Academy at Raythal, where the pilot's names are posthumously displayed. I'll do it one more time, because I definitely stuttered. Details wow. of the notorious Incident at Anoet are required reading at the Imperial Academy of Raythal, where the pilot's names are posthumously displayed. What's uh, what's your guess? I'll give you, I'll give you more. It's a light side, Dagoba interrupt. Oh, the interrupt tells, but I had pretty much already figured out that it was probably Dagoba. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> interrupt. And know it, and it's lore, Dagoba. A noad. That's the yeah, the system that they're at the Falcon breaks there's not, down there's at. Not much there. There's not much there, you know. It's just the Anoat system. It's asteroids. Asteroids do not concern me. All right. Oh, it can't be asteroids. Do not concern me. It's an interrupt. That's a dark side um, card, isn't it? Tunnel vision. It is not tunnel vision. The correct. I think it's something that had anything. Someone in right. chat got yeah. it. I think it was Taco Bill. It is egregious pilot error. Oh God! I yeah, the uh, the wonderful card. Oh, actually, I can put it on screen. Give me one second. Um, bum, bum, now, bum. Now, Sorry, it's been Taco a Bill gets to virtualize that card now. It's been a minute since I've uh, done this uh, <laughs> stream thing. There it is. Egregious pilot error should now be on screen for everybody. Oh, I mean, if we're gonna let Taco Bill virtualize another useless card into another useless card, I mean, yeah, he's he's pretty I'm good. Use Taco Bills always to their R index. Yeah, I, mean, I had it. I I was playing that in TTO and just using a uh, Vader pilot to Maul pilot, so I could use the force loss function. I use the and, the Rebel pilot Bill Kafer card in uh, like Yai Four Ops and stuff. What card is that? It's like Kin Kian V. It's it's the guy that looks like Taco Bell. It's the guy who looks like Bill, but he's a rebel pilot. It's Taco yeah. Bill V. Yes. It it's literally is B. Been that guy's Bell. actually name yeah. is B Lee. He just needs like a, a tattoo on his arm and like you know a bike or something, and he would be Taco Bell. <clears throat> yeah. Taco Bell drives a bike. That's not good. He's very into biking now. It's like his thing. He goes uh, to the he goes to the bike store where Jan works all the time. Does he? That's yeah. interesting. It's his new it's his whole new thing. I was thinking about he a built, motorcycle. He built a I bike a rack. Motorcycle. If it's just like a normal bicycle. He built no, a bicycle. bicycle. Yeah, yeah he, he built a bike rack with his wife this weekend and he's yeah. trying to show it off. And... Yeah, it's this it's this whole he's not into taco. I know this. He's, he might as well not call, call him No, it was in Slack. Slack You're chat. On the Slack. I, I, I'm really slacking on looking at <laughs> You sure are. Yeah, I mean, we might as well just call him Bike oh, Bill instead of Taco Bill. Yeah. Well, I usually only go to Slack to see if Solo Gracia will, like, send me the cards he's been trying to send me for, like, two months. And he just always says he doesn't have a bubble mailer. And I'm just like, <laughs> just like get a bubble mailer. And he's like, I had a wedding this week. Then, like, two days later, he's like, I had a baseball game yesterday. And I'm just like, all right, man. Wait, how is he doing all this during COVID? You can still send know. stuff in the he's mail. Crazy, man. No, no, but he's a wedding, the other a baseball stuff. game. Yeah. How are you staying busy know. while the rest of us are quarantined? Apparently, Solo Grasha is just a madman. I mean, Apparently. he is Solo Grasha. 
He is solo gracia. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, I don't I, know if that's how you pronounce it, but in my mind, that's how you pronounce. That's it. how I say it. Yeah. So. I mean, that's how I would. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. That, that, all three of us agreed on one thing so far, so that's pretty good. Hey, and when with that shining moment, I think it's a good time to uh, end this episode of Star Wars CCG Holo Theater. Um, this was really fun. Thanks, Robbie, for coming along, and be Fred, your first time. Uh, yeah, thanks for let's, joining us. Be let's Fred. not make it your last time, huh? You, you, now you got everything yeah, all set like up. We could have probably talked all night. Yeah, oh, that, sure I was could've. I was worried, so you know. But yeah, um, you gotta talk another thirty minutes about Solo Grasha by himself, probably. Pro- probably <laughs> then. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm playing Dan in fantasy football. I was trying to put that in there at some point. Um, but yeah, you know. I mean, I mean, last week. Dan this week. What's that? You guys both said something at the same time. Sorry, oh. I played I played Dan this week actually in my keeper league. Oh, nice! I'm playing. Let's let's you and me. Let's get together and. Uh, beat the shit out of Dan in some fantasy football, okay? I mean, I already beat him last week, so... Nice, nice. There you go. <laughs> keep him keep him down. Down, down. Yeah, All right. Ryan, actually, Ryan Saracen uh, mentioned that I would uh, have to wear Lenny's tutu because I was going to finish last in our league. And I said, no, I, I have to play Dan twice, and I've already beaten him once, so there's two wins right yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, for just, just like Ezekiel Elliott, feed on that all day. Yeah. Um, all right, boys, uh, it's been real. It's been awesome. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, make sure to get your subscriptions in for the Twitch channel. That really helps us out. Um, um, tune in this week, I think, on or next week <coughs> on the Gogolin? 22nd Gogolin's doing 23rd. the draft, right? Well, the 22nd and 23rd, uh, MHT and Kesslinger are going to play their top four games. Okay. I don't have anything for Shaw and Olsen yet, but keep an eye out for those. Okay. Um, I think next Monday is when we do the... Yeah, Monday is the draft. The draft, and, and then... Joe is in the chat. Uh, Maybe he can answer as to when he and uh, Greg Shaw are thinking about playing. Um, but yeah, keep your eyes... Gave... Go ahead. Sorry, uh, when Kesslinger game... Is next Wednesday? Uh, next Tuesday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh. Eastern. Wow. And again, I got Tuesday and Wednesday off again. There you go. So now you just get your popcorn ready. I'm going to uh, watch the game. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, keep an eye out for – keep an eye out on the forums. I'll post when – I'm sure Joe and <coughs> Shaw will post when they um, are going to play, and we'll I'll post it in there on, their, on the uh, main – topic for it and we'll get Twitch ready for both of those games and then tune in next Monday for the draft for OCS Yep. and then Wednesday for a review of the draft with uh, hopefully I think Chris Gogolin and um, possibly Adam Tronzo um, to help out with the uh, Is that uh, for Holo Theater next week or is that? Yeah, the, that, those are the potential guests hopefully they okay. We're still, yeah, we're still we'll figuring out. Uh, I think I might be available next week as well, so we'll, we'll see. So we're, we're just yeah. going to make Holo Theater a mashup, but it's not always going to be Dan and I or whatever. Um, so, yeah, but it's it's going to be fun. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. Um, like I said, get those subscriptions in. Tell your friends. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Be Fred, again for being with us. Thanks for Robbie thanks for hanging. Thanks, Fred. Yep. Go Stars. Go Stars. Sure, why not? <laughs> I had to get it in. All right.